First, let's set an intention for this time together. Your intention might be the reason that you're sitting in front of your computer. And this work on balance, strength, or flexibility. Whatever your intention is, set that now. Let's start with a brief, brief breathing technique. It's sometimes called yogic breathing or three-part breath. In this breath, we might choose to close our eyes if that's comfortable. And we breathe in three parts. We breathe first to the belly, then the low ribs, and the collarbones. Then we exhale first out of the collarbones, three, and then the low ribs, two. And we finish the exhale by drawing a bottom on your chin complete the breath. Uh, go to your capacity. If you feel strain in the head, heart, or lungs as a result of the deliberate breathing technique, take that as a sign to stop. Let's begin. Inhaling first to the belly, that's one, then the ribs, two, finally the collarbones, three, and exhale first down the collarbones, three, two, low ribs, one. Draw abdominal energy in, press the breath out. Let's continue. Four more rounds. Inhale. Three, and exhale. Three, two, one. Try to relax your shoulders, sit tall, inhale, one, two, three, and exhale, three, two, one, two more, Let's inhale, one, two, three, and release, three, two, one more round. Inhale, one, to the belly, two, the low ribs, three, into the collarbones, and exhale, last deliberate exhale, three, two, one. And relax your breath. Be still, but practice paying attention to your posture, to your breath, and anything else that comes up for you. Notice in particular if you're judging. If your mind is judging, see if you can be aware of that and then bring your awareness back to your breath, to your posture, what it is that you're actually doing right now. If your eyes are still closed, then wait for an inhale to skillfully open your eyes and sit very tall. With the next, let's bring our hands to prayer in front of our heart center. We begin with our asana, the movement, the physical postures of our practice today. I'll point out a couple things. Actually, let's relax here. Point out a couple things. I'm not wearing shoes, but when I teach this class at the local YMCA, I wear shoes usually. Um, There's nothing that says you need to be barefooted to do yoga. Um, the reason you might wear shoes is to support your feet better, especially when we come to our standing poses. Um, so do as you like. Um, let's also listen to our breath. If you feel like your breath is no longer smooth, if it's choppy, if you're not in control of your breath, take that as a sign that maybe you're holding a pose too long and maybe going too deeply into a pose. Uh, and then modify your pose. Take a break as you need to. Okay, let's get started. Let's inhale deeply. And then exhale, hands to prayer. And then to the exhale, release your hands down alongside your body. With an inhale, float your palms up towards one another. They don't need to touch. Exhale, circle the fingers down, and then with hands to prayer. Let's repeat. Inhale, lifting the arms, looking up if it doesn't hurt your neck. Exhale, hands back to prayer. Right, it's some more poses here. Inhale, lifting, looking up. Exhale, let's reach behind us. See if the hands can come towards one another. Inhale, and lift the arms back. Exhale, let's release the hands and then reach back. Releasing the arms down at the end of the inhale. With an inhale, lift the arms and exhale, reach back and down. Inhale, lift up. Add some more poses here. Exhale, leaning for a bit, reach the arms back and release the arms down. With an inhale, lift the left knee up. Let's uh, circle our toe. Circle our ankle. Two, three, four, five, and switch directions. Five, four, three, two, one, lower down. With an inhale, lift the arms up, 
All right, exhale, reach back, same exhale, the hands lower down with the next inhale, scoop the, uh, I'm going to mirror you, this actually, this it would be your right knee, so lift your right knee up, last time you would have lifted your left knee, circling two, three, four, five, and switch directions, try to sit tall, five, four, three, two, one, and lower down. With an inhale, lift the arms. This time, let's exhale, bring the arms parallel to the floor with the palms facing up. Try to lengthen your neck by pushing the armpits down. Push your feet down so you've got balance. And then inhale, let the crown of the head float taller. With an exhale, let's look over the right shoulder, twisting the upper body. Inhale, turn back forward. Keep your knees stable as you exhale, just turning the upper body. Inhale, forward. Exhale, right. Inhale, forward and exhale left. Inhale forward, exhale right. Inhale, turn forward, exhale last time, turn left. Inhale back forward, exhale, circle hands back to prayer. This time let's inhale, drawing the elbows together and then lift the hands up overhead. The elbows will come apart, exhale, then bring the arms back parallel to the floor. This time turn the fingers down. Let's circle the arms ten times in each direction. Two, Three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. Stop and then switch directions. Ten, nine, eight, seven, six, five, four, three, two, one. Let's stop. Point the fingers out and exhale. Circle hands back to prayer. Let's release our hands. Take the uh, right knee out to the side of the chair and then let the left knee drop down. Notice we're sitting on a chair, so you gotta kinda straddle uh, to get your balance right. Uh, the left leg is forward. Bring your hands to the top of the left leg, lean forward a little bit, and then see if you can start straightening the right leg behind you. So that's the front leg. We're gonna straighten it by tucking the toe under, and to our capacity, straighten the leg. Now, notice this. If you start to straighten your arms, the crown of the head lifts taller. It's probably gonna be harder to keep that back leg straight. So find a balance. It's fine to bend that knee as much as you need to, so you're not hurting yourself. Now the thing we want to do, this is a back bending pose. You want to let the tailbone drop down. This is the pelvis tilting back. So do that. Try to find balance now for your head so you're not straining your neck. This is our supported lunge pose. With an exhale, let's bend the elbows and fold forward just enough so that we can more safely walk our knees back together. It's called a supported warrior two pose. So let's take that front, that right knee, that front knee, and start walking it away from the left knee. Keep both knees right over the ankles until you feel a comfortable stretch in the groins. And inhale, lift the right arm, and exhale, draw the left arm back. If it's comfortable for your neck, turn your gaze out over your outstretched right with left fingers. You might notice as you stretch here, there's strain in the, in the shoulders. If it is, you can lower the arms lower. Just do, your, do the best you can. Maybe you can only work one arm today. This would be a modification if, what, if the other shoulder was hurt. Draw the abdominal energy in so the lower back stays long. This is also it's great for stretching our groins, but also strengthening the back. All right, good. Let's exhale. Bring our gaze forward. Release our arms. And then walk both knees to the side of the chair. Here's a twist. We did one twist where we were unsupported, the arms were out to the side. Here's a, a twist where if it doesn't hurt your back to do so, you could use one or both hands to the back of the chair to assist in the twist. So keep the knees stable. So the twist is from the, the spine up, not, not the hips. The hips are staying stable. This is going to help to, uh, to strengthen and connect the tissues in our thighs and our hips, as well as in the back. Deep breathing, and with an exhale, deepen with your next inhale. Let's bring our gaze forward and do those same poses on the other side. So we'll take the right leg, bring it to the side of the chair, and step the left leg back. Okay, I'm just going to come to the, the front thigh. I like to interlace my fingers, pushing down, gives a little more support. Leaning forward a little bit, I can straighten the back leg a little more easily, tucking the toe under the back foot. I can then start to challenge the pose to an appropriate level by straightening my arms somewhat. Draw the shoulder blades towards one another. 
Let the tailbone again drop down. Draw the belly button in and up. The practice develops all parts of the body. And by focusing our awareness on our poses, it also quiets the mind. And with an exhale, let's lean forward, draw our knees back together, and then start to walk the front knee away from the, uh, the left knee. Coming to an appropriate stretch, we'll inhale, lift the left up right arm, and then draw the right arm back. So the arms come more or less parallel to the floor. Armpits drop down with a relaxed neck. Turn your gaze out over the outstretched right fingers. And breathe. And exhale, the gaze come forward, release the arms, and then walk both knees to the side of the chair. For a twist, one or both hands to the back of the chair. If that feels too intense, here's a safer twist. Hands can stay on the knees, and then to our capacity, we can look over the shoulder. And then with an inhale, let's unwind, looking forward, and then walk the, uh, the legs back to center. Okay, how's your upper level? One, two, or three? You tell me or show me, I can't see you, but you know in your mind. Uh, level one, I'm feeling calm, pretty relaxed. Um, level two, I'm feeling the effort of the pose, maybe building up some heat in the body, maybe my breath is increasing, maybe my heartbeat elevated just a bit, but I'm feeling pretty confident. Level three, however, would be the place where I'm sweating profusely, can't catch my breath, heartbeat is racing, uh, muscles feeling tired, um, maybe aches and pains, strains in my joints. If you ever get to that level three in your practice, take that as a sign to, uh, to take a break. Um, if you don't quickly recover, you might want to let somebody know that you're feeling some distress at this moment. Okay, um, usually I drink water and I would step to the side, reach down and grab a water bottle and drink if I'm thirsty. This is a pretty quick practice, so we're not going to stop for water, but uh, on your own, remember to drink as you need to. Okay. I'm good. So now we enter our standing portion of the practice. So with an inhale and support and awareness, let's lift up to standing. Let's start over on the it's going to be the left side of your chair. The chair is there for support. We can hold on to it for support in these balancing poses. Um, and we can also do many of these poses seated. So if you are in a place where it's difficult to stand, stay seated. First pose is tree balancing pose. This pose can be done seated. We just turn the left knee out to the side. So it would look like this from a seated posture. Kind of like what we did before. But we're going to add our arms to it, if you like. We can lift the hands to prayer or eventually overhead. Now, if we are standing, we can add a greater challenge to the balance by lifting the heel off the ground, uh, the heel of the left foot, or in time, maybe lift the, the foot completely off the ground. Chairs there for support. Draw the belly button towards the spine. Bring your hands to prayer, unless you want to hold the chair for support. If you'd like to go further, you could lift the hands up overhead, possibly straightening the arms. Other variations of this pose would it keep the hands on the hips or in front of the heart center, or maybe extending the arms out like the branches of a tree. Keep breathing. Balancing poses may, are made a little bit easier if we find one spot that's not moving to look at. Focus your awareness there. And then with the next scale, let's release. Shake the legs out. Standing mountain pose. Inner edges of the feet parallel to one another, toes spread and relaxed, draw energy up through the insteps, through the shins, contract the quadricep muscles to help draw the kneecaps up, let the tailbone drop down and draw abdominal energy in. Shoulders draw back, so if the arms are alongside the body, the thumbs slightly turn out. Now, find balance for the head over the rest of the body. So even though we're engaged, you might feel like you could stand this way for a long time. Tree balancing pose. Okay. I'm sorry. Uh, standing mountain pose. Now, with it, uh, let's shift our weight over a little bit to the uh, left foot, to the right foot, and then we're going to start to circle our knees. So here we go. We're going to lift the knee up, turn out to the side, and lower down, and continue lifting, turning, and lower. Inhale to lift, turn out, exhale, lower down. Inhale, 
and lower. We switch directions, lifting, turning, and lower. Here we go. We'll lift out, draw in, and lower down. Out, across, and down. Two more. Circling, and again. Those are great for strengthening the leg that's on the ground, but also working on the, uh, the muscles, ligaments, and tendons in the hip that's, that's moving. Okay, good. Um, here's another pose. It's called dancer's pose. We're going to modify it by just lifting the heel up. Some people grab the heel, but that puts more strain in the, in the knee. So, um, so I'm going to encourage us, especially for new to this practice, just lift that uh, right heel, left heel up, draw it in close to the bottom. You want to go further in this pose, so you can start drawing that knee back. Notice the knees are close together. We're not pulling out to the side, which tends to be straining for the knee. If the knee's moving anywhere, it's straight back. Draw the belly button in. Bring the hands to prayer or hold the chair for balance. If you want to go a little bit further here, draw the shoulder blades back and then see if you just might lean an inch or two forward. Strengthening the back. But then inhale. Let's rise up and exhale. Let's release. If you're feeling any tension in that and the muscles in the back of the leg, massage them out. And let's do the same pose as on the other side. We'll come to the other side of the chair, starting from standing mountain pose. Let's shift our weight over to the right foot and then turn the, uh, the left knee out to the side. Excuse me, the right knee out to the side. Lift the foot up. If you like to challenge the balance further so the foot can be on the inner ankle. So this time the, the right quadricep is engaging to pull the right kneecap up. The, the uh, right thigh is extending out. Tailbone drops down, abdominal energy draws in. Tree balancing. Remember, if you're feeling tired after a few breaths, that might be the appropriate amount to hold the pose. And with an exhale, let's release. And come back to standing mountain pose. Now we're going to circle the hip. So we're going to lift the right knee up, turn the knee out to the side, exhale, lower down. And lift. Two. Three and four and five and switch directions. Lifting, turning across and lowering and four, three, two, good one. All right, shake the legs out. And then it's modified dancer's pose. Let's lift the right heel up towards the hip. Try to pull the elbow close to the hip. If you want to go further, start drawing that right knee back. Draw the belly button in. Hands can come to prayer from the heart center. We can fold. If you want to try to challenge the balance a little further. Keep breathing. And inhale, rise up. Exhale. Let's release. Shake the hands out. Get them all. I think we did. Let's come to the back of our chair. These are some other classic yoga standing poses. First one we'll do will be uh, Uttanasana, standing forward fold. So with the feet parallel to one another, we can bend our knees a little bit and then bring the hands to the chair, the back of the chair. If it doesn't hurt your back to do so, we could start to straighten our legs. If your legs are straight, then maybe you're going to go further by possibly bending the elbows. My spine is at about a 45 degree angle to the floor. This is a pretty safe way to come into a forward bend. Some people go further. If you feel inclined to go further, you can bend your elbows more. But if you are going deeper in the pussy, you can keep the lower back long and make sure it's not causing strain in the lower back or the back of the legs or anywhere else. Keep breathing. Okay, we're going to come to standing. The safe way to do that is to bend your knees a little bit and then rise up. Let's widen the knees, widen the feet. This is a standing straddle pose. As before, we're going to let the tailbone drop down, draw abdominal energy in, as lower back as long. Now bend the knees as much as you need to so it doesn't hurt the back, and then bring the hands to the back of the chair. If there's room to straighten the legs, do it. If there's room to go further, the hips might shift back a little bit. Let's really listen carefully to any signs that, uh, especially in the lower back, that we might be causing strain or going too far or holding too long. Again, about 45 degree angle in the spine, pretty safe. Going further adds risk, and, and feel free to do that, but um, 
and recognize that if you're feeling pain that you're going too far. With an inhale, rise up. Let's walk our feet back together. Okay, warrior two, triangle pose, warrior one, and then we'll call it a day. Let's start with the uh, left toes out to the side. Left toes are pointing straight out to the side. Um, then we're going to, the chair is here for support if you want to hold it. Let's bend the right knee so it comes directly over the ankle. If you're looking at your knee, you should just be able to see your toes beyond your knee. All right. Okay, let's lift the, the uh, left arm and then bring the right arm back. Remember we did the supported warrior two seated from a, a chair position? We could do the same pose from the chair. Now, um, standing a little more challenging. So there's a tendency to lean forward in the pose. Instead, let's see if you can make your, the crown grab really tall and then turn your gaze out over your outstretched left fingertips if that doesn't hurt to do that. Warrior two. With an inhale, it's straight in the front leg. Bring the gaze back forward. Relax the arms. Triangle pose next. The back of the left hand can come to the inner left thigh. We can reach the right arm up to touch our shoulder or head. Or if it doesn't hurt your shoulder to do it, we can lift the arm up to the sky. And likewise, if it's not uncomfortable for our neck, we can look up past the left thumb. If you want to go further in this pose, we could let the bottom hand get a little closer to the floor. Now, if we want to, there's a tendency here to bow up in the spine. Let's instead see if we can keep both sides of the, the spine equally long and breathe. And then inhale, rise up, and exhale, release. Okay, right toes out to the side. Let's bring those right toes and face them towards the chair. We're going to do actually two more poses, warrior one and then another balancing pose called warrior three. We'll do those same poses on the other side. So with the left foot forward, let's bend the left knee so, we, so it's right over the ankle and we can see our toes again. The front of the left hip, let's pull it forward so both hips are equal distance from the chair. The wider the feet are apart, the more challenging this pose will be. We can do a couple things with ours. Uh, we can either bring them to our hips or to bring them to prayer. Um, a pose I like to do, or an arm posture I like to do, is what I call scarecrow arms. In this pose, the elbows are right under the wrists, and we're pulling the elbows and wrists back to open up the upper chest. Let's breathe. You might feel more challenged to take a deep breath here. So part of the reason we do these constraints in our poses is so we can feel the challenge of breath, breathe into that appropriate challenge, and strengthen our heart and lungs. Try to find balance for the head. So we're not straining the neck. All right. With an inhale, let's straighten the front leg, and exhale, release our arms. Take a pause. Now warrior three, we're going to come back into warrior one, and then we're going to fold out over the chair. So let's bend the left knee, let's bring our hands to prayer, inhale deeply, and then with an exhale, lean forward. The torso is going to lean forward. You can either balance with the hands at prayer, or a little easier is to bring the hands to the back of the chair. And we can lift our back leg, if it doesn't hurt to do that. Otherwise, keep the toes on the ground. If we are lifting our leg, there may be room to fold to straighten the left leg, that's the front, the right leg, that's the front leg, and possibly fold forward. We're going to challenge the balance further, draw the shoulder blades back, and then maybe bring the hands back to prayer. If you want to go further, you could extend the arms out like wings, or forward, like Superman, or a woman. Alright. If we're still on the pose, let's Bend the front knee, gently place the back foot to the ground, and lift back up at the warrior one, straighten the front leg, and exhale, step forward. Poses on the other side. Let's take the left toes, turn them out to the side, bend the left knee so it comes directly over the ankle. The warrior two. Crown of the head tall, turn the gaze to the right, to the, to the left. I'm having a hard time mirroring the pose. When I do this in a class, uh, the trick I use is to look at students, and then I look and I say, oh, that's their right leg. So they're looking at their right leg or their left leg. And you know the tricks that my students don't know. All right, warrior two. With an inhale, it's straight in the front leg. Let the gaze come back forward and release the arms. Go right to triangle pose. 
left hand down, right hand lifts. If you like, look up. If you want, let the bottom hand get a little closer to the floor, but see if you can keep both sides of the spine long. Find a challenge. But if you're feeling pain, you're going too far. Breathe. Use your breath as a gauge of your effort. It should be smooth, long, and deep. Okay, push the feet down, then inhale. Let's lift up and exhale, release. Now, warrior one. The um, left foot will come forward. Right foot will step back two or three feet or further if you want to challenge the push further. But don't step so far back that you can't keep your hips equal distance to the chair. Bend the left knee. Uh, hands to prayer or scare her arms. Balance the head. Breathe. Inhale, straighten the front leg, and exhale, release the arms. Pausing a bit, and we'll come back into it. Just like warrior one, just like we did before, hips are scissoring, so the uh, front of the right hip is pulling forward, front of the left hip is pulling back. Hands to prayer, shoulders back, neck relaxed, pull forward. Either hands to prayer or grab the chair again. Um, if you're more advanced in this practice, you might step your foot a little further back. That will allow for the back leg in time to come parallel to the floor. For new to the practice, keep the front foot closer to the chair. So you want to feel that so the chair can stay right under the shoulders. So if you need to grab it, we've got more support. If you want to add any of those other arm positions, feel free to. I'll try not to strain. Try not to struggle. With an exhale, bend the front knee. Gently place the back foot to the ground. Inhale, let's straighten the front leg. And exhale. Release. Okay, those are our puzzles. Come to a seated position. If you're thirsty and need a, a break, step to the side. Reach down and grab your bottle and take some water. Okay, it's more than 15 minutes. We're going on close to 30 minutes now, so that's just how this practice unfolded today. Let's do a couple other things before we leave because I think that you, you might find these useful for maintaining flexibility in the wrists and the hands. So if we turn the fingers up, we can circle the fingers down, right to the outside and up, and two, and three, and switch directions, three, and two, and one. Good, let's curl the fingers down, and then open them up wide, curl down, open up wide, and exhale, release. Uh, a couple others that I think are nice as a side bend. You can widen the feet a little bit, bring the, uh, uh, the left hand to the left thigh and reach the uh, right arm up to the sky. With an exhale, pull just a bit. Inhale, come slightly out of the pose. And exhale, second time. Inhale. And exhale. Let's inhale and rise up. We'll switch hands. Lifting the right arm to the sky, push the left hand down, exhale, side bend, right, inhale, lifting slightly, exhale, deepening, inhale, and exhale, last time, inhale, rise up, exhale, let's add a hip stretch, feet come back together, uh, let's lift the right knee up and push it into the left thigh, if you want to go further, you can step the leg all the way over, if the feet can wrap around, wrap the toes around the back, otherwise, wherever the feet reach, push your legs together. Okay, so if the right knee's on top, let's lift the right arm and then bring the left arm underneath. And then grab our arms. Try to wiggle your fingers a little closer together. Another variation of this arm stretch, if you want to try this, is to try to push the hands together or maybe interlace the palms. You might lift the elbows, but no higher than shoulder height. The tendency to lean back in the pose. Let's sit tall, moving the lower back forward. Breathe smoothly. And exhale. Let's release. Unwind. Go right to the other side. So first variation is to lift the right knee up and squeeze the thighs together a little bit deeper. If you like, try to reach one leg over the other, crossing the legs. With the uh, whatever, wherever we get to, we want to squeeze our legs together. So now the other knee is on top. Let's lift the left arm, bring the right arm under the left, grabbing shoulders, or bring the hands closer to one another. 
Remember, sit tall, lifting the sternum. Try to take a deep breath. And exhale. Let's release and sit back in our chair.